I wish I could tell you guys where I am right now, but I honestly have no idea. Uh, lately, if uh, my wife puts a hiking trail within like an hour and a half from my house, I just drive that. I don't even know where that is. So we are on another hiking adventure somewhere in the woods. And today, what I want to talk about is mistakes that project managers make when sending requests to tech people. Now, as far as titles, different companies have different titles for people. And when I talk about project managers, I think that is fairly clear. It's the people who are in charge of a project, who are in charge of organizing things. And then they could have a team of assistants, whether they're called assistant project managers, they're called EDD analysts, um, tech people, just any kind of way. And what project managers do is they figure out what the job is. They kind of organize instructions and then they send those instructions to those tech people who will actually do uh, most of the work like processing, maybe some kind of data manipulation and so on. And so this is what we're talking about. What mistakes they usually make when sending requests to their assistants or their tech people who are handling more complicated and more tedious part of the job. Okay, I know, I know some of my coworkers are gonna jump in here and say, oh, Nikolai, you're making this video because we had this disagreement about so-and-so, but no, I assure you, it's not that. Um, people I work with uh, generally don't make these mistakes. We've, uh, we've ironed out a process. We are very good at communicating. So these things come from uh, my years of experience and let support working at different companies with different people. Also, it comes from what other people had submitted to me or told me like maybe over drinks or so and they say, oh, you wouldn't believe what our project managers do. So these are the kind of things that I'm talking about. So without that, let's continue. All right, we reached our first destination. This is the waterfall, but this is too noisy. Too many people here and it's too loud. So we're going to keep moving. All right, so I think the easiest place for us to start is deadlines. And this would be either agreeing to deliver job by a specific deadline or committing to an existing deadline without checking what else is going on in the technical department. Now we have a few different types of deadlines, right? We have some hard deadlines for a company has to produce by a certain day. So those are kind of deadlines that you have to um, deal with, right? There, you, you anticipate them and you prepare for them and you stay on top of the client and you make sure that they give you data early enough so you could make the production deadline. However, there are other deadlines. For example, a client would like to have it by tomorrow afternoon, but it's not a hard deadline. It's, um, you know, it could move plus minus a few hours, maybe even a day or so. There are also deadlines created by a salespeople where they're like, I want to impress the client. Let's deliver it by tomorrow, 10 a.m. This way I'll be really impressed. So if you do have a soft deadline or deadline where a salesperson just wants to impress the client, you know, this is a good time to come in to your technical area, to tech department and say, are you guys busy? I have a production of 50,000 documents. A client would like to have it by tomorrow afternoon. Is that doable? Is that a problem? Not a problem and so on. And then tech people say, oh yeah, we're good. We, we don't have too much going on. We'll do it. Or they could say, we swamped. Can you push it back until next morning? Would that be okay? And the project manager could check with the client saying, hey, we're a little busy, is next day morning okay? And if the client says yes, then great. Now we've, uh, everyone's got enough time to do their job and no one has to rush through things, possibly making mistakes and so on. So that's why checking with technical department or any department you send your work to uh, prior to sending, prior to committing to a deadline is important. You know, just check with them. If they're busy, not busy, is the deadline okay and not okay? And everyone will appreciate you for doing that and, uh, there are hopefully going to be less mistakes in the project if no one has to rush to get it completed. All right, so the lake looks really awesome. I like the swimming spot on the other side. Let me see if I can zoom in. Uh, right there, wait, 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 there we go. So there are people swimming, they got like tubes and everything. So we'll see if we can uh, go around the lake and get to that spot and maybe we can jump in. We didn't bring swimming trunks or anything, but shh, don't tell anyone. 
The next mistake I want to talk about is not specifying size of data when requesting certain work to be performed. And there are a few ways that project managers request work to be done. They could send an email or they could put an entry in some kind of database, tracking system, uh, something like that. And that request or that email is usually being seen not just by one person who's doing the work, but probably entire department, maybe department manager, maybe manager of a manager, you know, and so on. So there are lots of people who see these requests coming in, again, whether it's in the tracking system or in the email. And people who are in charge of this, people who organize this from sort of a higher level, they need to know what employees are working on. So let's say somebody's on the train, and there's an email going to a department saying, please process uh, data from this folder. So the department manager needs to know how many gigabytes is it? Is it a five gigabyte job? Which means they don't even have to worry about it. It'll just get processed and done. Or maybe it's a terabyte job and they have to schedule more people to come in or have somebody uh, stay late or something like that. And same thing applies to non-processing requests as well. Maybe somebody needs to FTP some data or copy it to a hard drive. And depends on how much data there is, different work has to happen. And if the analyst maybe starts to FTP too much data, you could jump in and say, hey, whoa, 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 you're trying to FTP two terabytes. Whoa, we're gonna need to send like a blank hard drive to copy it over and bring it over, something like that. And that's something that the manager needs to know. So because of that, Whenever you send a request to your technical team, to your assistants, and you CC and other people, include scope of work, how much data there is. Now, the next thing on my list is not including tech people on the consultation with the client. Now, we all have different levels of technical abilities. Some can speak tech more than others. Some have their expertise. Somebody knows more about concordance, somebody else more about relativity and so on. Uh, but when you have a con when you're talking to a client, so let's say a project manager is talking to a client and they have a, a technical discussion, they're getting into some details about something. So a project manager may not be able to continue that conversation or participate enough in a manner uh, that they could meaningfully contribute to it or suggest a best possible course of action. And this is where project managers should stop, get a tech person, and get them on the phone so that well, so that everyone can speak the same language, understand what's going to happen in the project, and not just to agree to something, uh, just because you don't understand, you know, just say, oh yes, I'll do that, sure, sure, no problem. And then when you actually get to doing it, it'll turn out to be it's very complicated, or there may be um, easy alternative or something like that, and that wasn't brought up on the call, so now project manager doesn't want to call back the client and say, oh no, no, actually there is a better way of doing it. So being honest about your technical skills and bringing in help when needed. I think that's a really important thing to do. All right, so we did go swimming in this lake. It's pretty awesome. Uh, a lot of rocks on the bottom. I hit like my toe on the, on the rock, something else. Some, like my foot is bleeding now, but it's okay. It was a lot of fun. The water on top is like super warm, super awesome. That brings me to the next topic of what we're talking about. And it is not being specific enough in your requests. Whenever you want somebody to do something, don't make them guess, don't make them reference to something else. Write in your request exactly what you want them to do. The worst thing I see project managers do is say like, yeah, run this production and use fields same as we used for this client that time. And then what happens is, turn out to be production fields are own, and then you go back to the other production that they mentioned and turn out to be half of it was produced with one set of fields and half with the other set of fields. So be specific, say exactly what you want done so everything is in one place. So the person who's doing the work just needs to read the request and they know exactly what they're doing. And just like that, we're back to where we started. This is a dam that keeps all this lake together. So the last point I wanna talk about is, or the last mistake I wanna talk about that project managers make is sending one request to multiple departments and expect them to just work together and coordinate on time and work things out and get the project done. And no, it doesn't work like that. You're the project manager, you are in charge of working with multiple departments and making sure everyone plays along nicely, instructions go from one department to the next and so on. You can be like, uh, for example, if you have forensic collection, processing and printing, for example, you can't just CC three departments saying, okay, you guys collect the data, you process the relativity, and you guys print. 
send it off and you're like, good luck guys, you get it done. No, it's your job to work with forensics department to figure out the collection, what specifications are there, all that stuff, send it to them, get data collected, confirm, make sure it's all good, send it to processing team, have them process, uh, look at the results, make sure everything is good, and then work with the printing department to get things printed. And you would have to work with each department on deadlines, uh, make sure you put clear instructions together for each department, send it to them at the right time where you can work on that data. So yes, please don't do that. Don't send one request or even just take an email from a client and forward it to the entire company and says, go do that people. It's your job to take the instructions from the client, break them down to what each department needs, send it to that department, make sure they do it, work with playing with them and so on. That's what project management actually means. And that concludes my list of top mistakes project managers make in the world of e-discovery. If you agree with me, give me a thumbs up. Disagree, put it in the comment section below. You got more to add, please add it to the comment section below. If you find other annoying things or frustrating things that project managers do. And I will see you on the next video.